Okay. So, you know. Let's go back. Go back. Let's walk it back. The program that you started, name it again. Say what it is. Say what it called is. The Amplify Project. Okay. And, and what the fellowship program is called the Amplify Fellowship. All right. And what made you start that? So, um, just a little bit of my backstory. So, um, I've been an educator since like 2000. Okay. And I was always the teacher when I was teaching, I was the teacher that would like play music in the background while the kids was working and it would be just loud enough for them to be able to hear it. You know, I was DJing the dances for the kids and this, that, and the third and this, that, and the third. I had an opportunity at one point during my commute in my, in my career to help construct a music production program. Um, and did it and built it with along with a brother named Travis Bean, shout out to Travis Bean. Um, but I didn't really have the opportunity to completely involve myself in it simply because I had a young family and I was the assistant principal of the school. So, you know what that life is like. Oh, yes, so, sir. Um, I had an opportunity to come to Eastern Michigan University and run one of the federal programs there. And in the process, I started working on my Ph.D. And what I wanted to study was how music production can be used to teach STEM concepts to students in K-12. Mm. Like how how do you catalyze hip hop and this 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 decolonization of music that's happening in front of us where anybody can make a beat, Grammy Award winning albums being recorded in people's bedrooms, so on and so forth. And how do you turn that? How do you make that where or how do how do you get get it where kids are making beats on a day to day basis and the skills that they're developing transfer into other career spaces? Right. So you ain't everybody ain't going to be Drake. But if you learn how the music is made then you could be better at uh, using user interfaces for design programs. Or Engineering or something like that. Yeah, You could develop your, your marketing skills or your project management skills or whatever. So started studying that, started to see how local hip hop communities are typically intertwined with community activism. Um, many people who participate in um, local hip hop communities in terms of a hip on a hip hop level as a practice. I'm not talking about, you know, hip hop as a product. I'm talking about breakdancing, the five elements, this this deeper element of hip hop where it's, it's, it's engaging that fifth element of knowledge itself. These same people are engaging in levels of community activism to support the development and primarily in black communities. And they're typically getting older and older people. And they're typically people that are engaged in other service industries like social workers, like teachers, so on and so forth. So I said, well, what's the limitation in? Um, you know, what do what do these musicians or what do these individuals want? Because we need to start showing people how if you're interested in that level of artistry and that level of expression, there is a connection to the need for community service there. So I said, OK, I tell you what, these community agencies and 501c3s that's try, starting to do that's trying to do stuff in, in the community. They need volunteers. Not only do they need volunteers that grunt work volunteers, but they need people to almost serve as like ambassadors for what they do to these communities. Um, in a way, somebody who could be a champion in that community. So I said, well, why don't we do this? Music, I believe that every teacher is an MC. I believe that every music, like a music artist has the same skill sets as a great teacher in a way. We could talk about that in a few seconds. But why not provide the, the artist with what they need to be able to try to advance their career in the direction they want to. And we provide that opportunity for them in exchange for them, instead of it being solely about profit, it being solely about, you know, us coming in and us ex extracting value from that artist, or even us as a company tech coming in and now we own the intellectual property of that artist. Right. Why don't we let them keep all that? And they pay, they pay it forward, excuse me. <clears throat> they pay what they're receiving forward mm -hmm. in serving the community. 
and going in and literally helping that helping that agency grow, develop, get its message out, so on and so forth. Dope because concept. We're, not, we're a nonprofit. You know Dope what I'm saying? Dope concept. So, so we've had this is our third year. We've had eight acts. Um, so as a result, as a result, the acts they're endeared to the community. You know, they we have our own day at the Ann Arbor Summerfest where all of our acts are performed. They participate in all kinds of events and the community sees this happening. And also, you know, the, now these acts are paid musicians They're, And we always want them to get paid for what they do. Mm -hmm. So what they're making, they're paid musicians working in the community, working community events, working at community events, doing music, working at community events, organizing programs, teaching young people, so on and so forth, whatever they choose. So they're benefiting not only just from creating the music, but they're also benefiting from endearing themselves to the community in ways that's real unique and real special. So that program came about because my lens was opening up to say, you know, the currency involved in making music got evolved. 